Hey everybody, good morning. It's Monday morning, April 27th. I have to look at my my computer. I have to look here to see what the heck date it is. There was something I was going to order for our family room and it's two new chairs. And I was gonna wait for this big sale at Crate and Barrel. And I missed the sale because I was like off a month. <laughs> <laughs> I was off. But my son-in-law assures me there will be more sales. He works there at Crate and Barrel. Also, I am praying that I don't hear the popping. I did hear it. Doggone it. I thought I figured it out. I'm sorry. If anybody knows how to do these Facebook Lives and how to turn off this stupid pop thing, please let me know. Uh, go to customer service and uh, Brandy will get it to me. I really thought I had done it. Uh, gone it. Okay, well, what do you do? So, um, last Saturday, which would be two days ago, I got so sick. I had allergies up the hoo-hoo. It happens every year. We live in a valley with, with beautiful green hills in the winter, like December, January, February, March. In April, they start to... Uh, they start to go brown and then we're all brown here and those grasses wipe me out. So two days before Saturday, I went for a walk in a total windstorm. Okay, stupid meter, I'll give that a 10 out of five, all right? Then, then the next day I went on a regular walk and then Saturday morning, the kids came over, we totally social distance and we open up our backyard, we're onto a field and we have a little red car a little car that they can drive around and i sat out there in a lawn chair to watch them because jerry their dad adair's husband was trying to fix my fountain so by about one i could just feel it everywhere and then came the hay fever and yes i do take i do take stuff but it takes 24 hours for that to kick in i was a mess but that said, that's a lemonade thing, lemons, Oh, I ended up ending up a show I'm binge watching and I watched the last three episodes while I'm sitting there sneezing and you know, oh, put, I put chapstick on my nose because otherwise it would just be a mess. Okay, TMI. Anyways, I'm kind of embarrassed to tell you what the show is and it is not for the faint of heart. Understand this, this is not for family time viewing. It's Ozark. It, <clears throat> and I just finished the third series. <laughs> wow. But again, it's not for the faint of heart. So disclaimer there, there we go. So let's see what is going on. Okay, so I went on what might be my last walk until rodeo weekend, which is the second weekend of June, which is not happening in Livermore. But magically, they just, the allergies go away. So... This is my last walk for a while. I got to figure out what the heck to do. But I'm wondering if you guys have seen this sort of thing on sidewalks. I did take a picture of next door because they did it. But then I figured out how they did it. The parents take masking tape, tape off this grid, and then the kids go and fill it in. I just love it and i love the little handprints i see some of you are watching ozark too oh man you guys you just hold on deborah it, it, it's dark and it's so good okay that's tmi right there so anyways um i ha i have a real oh wait there are some other things Oh, if you want to order my paper piecing book please just go to amazon all right I actually called somebody a couple days ago because they'd ordered it off my site. I don't have any copies. And by the time it ships from the East Coast, where CNT's warehouse is, all the way to the West Coast, and then it ships to you, it's I probably will lose money. But if you go to Amazon, you can have it right there tomorrow. So type, well, maybe not tomorrow, but you know what I mean. So if you're interested in that, that's how I would do it. Then also, here we have... Somebody else asked, how do I get this pattern? We've been looking at this quilt behind me when I'm sewing at the machine. It's called Circle Play. And on my personal website, alexandersonquilts.com, 
there's a downloadable PDF. So you can have this this afternoon ready to go. So as you know, our, nor our we have new normals going on right now. I just got off the phone yesterday or a couple days ago with my friend Jean Wells. She and her daughter Valerie own the Stitch and Post up in Sisters, Oregon. And probably a lot of you have been to the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show. It's every sec it's every year on the sacred second Saturday of July. And Jean and Valerie were both incredibly incredibly upset that they had to cancel this year. This year is the 45th, but wait a minute, they're not canceling it, meaning it's gonna be completely different. I'm not quite sure what they have up their sleeves, but I would strongly encourage you to go to their website, the Stitchin Post. Stitchin is S-T-I-T-C-H-I-N. It's in Sisters, Oregon go to their webpage, scroll to the bottom, and get their newsletter. Sign up for it. Jean told me that all the information will be going out that way to people. So I don't even think I'm on their email list and I've got to go get my name on it too. I love that. Here we are in a situation where, you know, it's total lemons and people are making lemonade. Now, if you've never been to the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show on the second Sacred Saturday, it is a sight to behold. This little town has under, I just did a little Wikipedia thing on it, under 3,000 people. And on that quilt show weekend, about 10,000 people descend on the little town of Sisters. And there's over a thousand quilts that are hung everywhere. This is usually the grand dame display of the whole thing. That's the side of the Sister of Stitch and Post building. And the firemen actually come and hang those quilts. But as you go from building to building in this adorable little town, there's just quilts everywhere. Oh wait, did I say over a thousand? Yes, I did. So get on their mailing list. Um, she was telling me different things. Valerie is working on it. It's gonna be a great celebration. And the 45th year is just gonna be brought to you virtually. They're calling the 46th year a do-over. And the really great news is they got hold of all the teachers, all the teachers, and they're gonna come back, well, come back. They're gonna come in 2021. There were only two that couldn't do it. So if you were like super excited about taking a class from a certain teacher, they will probably be there. So that is really great. Now, I will tell you about us and what we're doing at thequiltshow.com. We were supposed to tape in March. Well, that didn't happen. We were supposed to tape in June. Well, that's not gonna happen. And so maybe I've talked about this already, but I just wanna run through it again so nobody's surprised. So we're like going, what do we do? Because at thequiltshow.com, we dedicate ourselves to bringing you new programming every other week. I mean, we've got over 330 shows or something. So somebody brought up, uh, might've been Justin, why don't we do a compilation show? And I'm like going, well, let me think about it. So I talked to the producer, Shelly, about it. And all of a sudden we got really excited because of all the programming that we have brought you over the 13 years there's probably a lot of stuff you don't even remember. So what we are doing, and as Shelly started digging into it, she couldn't believe it. We're gonna do two shows on piecing, uh, piecing compilations, and two shows on applique. So it was really hard to go pick what we were gonna put in and all that. I, I, they're gonna be fabulous shows, really deep resources for you. And honestly, why we didn't do this five years ago is beyond my comprehension. And then in July, I will be doing four shows here at my house with four different guests and Ricky will not be with me. I think I told you this because I do not want him getting on a plane and never before would we have ever considered this, but we're just making some lemonade here. You guys have been so gracious, so kind, so lovely. I can't even begin to tell you. I've gotten, I've gotten, 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 gotten. I've received, 
at least I'm not saying, ah, I have received lovely, lovely letters from you. Uh, one in particular that I just got this morning and I wrote back and it was about teaching. On Simply Quilts, I didn't teach, the guest taught. On thequiltshow.com, once in a while I'll teach, but pretty much it's the guest. We're just there as hosts driving people through the whole thing. But at my core level, I am a quilt teacher. So this is why this feels so natural to me. And for me, it's just coming up with content. Well, the oh, the content today is how to piece a Lemoyne. But I wanna back up on one thing. On the paper piecing, on the add a quarter ruler, I was teaching you how to use like a postcard and then the add a quarter ruler. Well, I have an old add a quarter ruler. Now, if you buy one, it will have one side has the little bevel quarter inch and then the other side actually has a V like this so you can just fold the paper back on that. So that's super cool. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. A lot of things I just kind of miss because it's what I've always done. So I appreciate that. Okie dokie. Yes, let's do the Lemoyne before I talk about this whole Sequoia sampler thing. So I am going to go here and I'm so bummed about, about this, that, <laughs> exactly that noise, okay? What it is, is we're on five or four, four or five different platforms and I'm hearing it, all the comments come up, so I'll work on it. Anyways, this is a Lemoyne. And it's actually a very, very forgivable block, believe it or not. It's made of diamonds and it has Y seams. And that's why everybody gets so completely flipped out over it. Now, there are some patterns like Deb Tucker has some. And I've, I was on, um, uh, take a shot. I was searching the web and I know Deb Tucker makes hers with, with triangles and this and that. I like working with the diamond because I really don't want to cut up like this fabric. I love looking at the whole thing. So this is a 12 inch Lemoyne. Let's get started on it. First you have to do, oh, I've got this all organized and I don't want to screw it up. Um, uh oh, I dropped my pen. Oh, there it is. Here I have cut out all my pieces. They're they're exactly cut to size. This is a diamond that's cut three by three. These are parallel edges. I think this is for, and I think, I can't remember what this is. Okay, I don't wanna give out measurements because I can't remember off the top of my head. What you have to know is when you are working with the diamond, you've got what, two sides that are on the straight of grain and two sides that are on the bias. So that's one of the tricky things when you go to press this and do all this, there's a darn good chance you might stretch out your biases and then the whole thing's gonna end up like a bra. I remember <laughs> when I was at a Silomar teaching this like a million years ago, one person uh, did was working a jungle fabric and she ended up like with this bra and I know it was in the piecing. And then she made another one and she ended up with a bra half and she said, I don't know what to do. They're not flat. And I said, make it into a jungle bra. Okay, so I kind of blew that joke before I got to it. So here are all the pieces. The other thing I wanna talk about and it's not so much relevant here. Yeah, right here. Let's look at this piece. I could, I'm going to pay attention to how I put this piece of fabric. This is light right here. If I turned it around here, I'm going to lose the tip, right? It's just because of the value difference. There we go. So that's why when I laid this out, I made sure that the darker component was at the tip. So that's just a little tip -a -roo, all right? Let me make sure my iron's on. Hmm. All right, there we go. So I've cut out all the pieces. Oh, wait, I gotta get that one back. <clears throat> Wherever there is going to be a Y seam, like here, it comes up, it comes up, it comes out, okay? Wherever there's gonna be a Y seam, I put on the wrong side a little dot. This is this pen that we're gonna be getting in soon that disappears after three days and you can iron it and it doesn't stay in permanently. Quilters select. 
Okay, those are gonna be my stop starts. So that's important to do. And of course, they would be on the wrong, well, I guess on this it shows both ways. So there you go, quarter inch. If you can't do it eyeball, get your ruler and do it. So there that goes. <clears throat> All right, so here is the first that I sewed on, the first piece. What we're gonna do is we're basically going to sew a unit like this. There's your Y seam. When you go to line up this diamond to this quarter square triangle, you're going to line up the outside pointy edge and you will see that it's not going to fit perfectly. There's gonna be a little bit of background showing underneath. I'm going to stitch to this on this side. I'm gonna stitch from the outside in to the dot. When I get to the dot, I'm going to back stitch. If you don't back stitch, the whole thing's gonna fall apart. Ask me how I know. All right, I've got one side sewn on. Don't iron. Now I'm going to sew on this side. So I'm going to line it up. And this time, rather than sewing from the point in, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to sew from the, I'm gonna back stitch right here, and then I'm gonna come all the way to the edge. So for the first one, again, I am going to go from the outside tip in, back stitch. For the second one, I'm going to go from the inside out, from the dot, back stitch, there you go. So now this is what I have going on right here. I want to be able to open this up and not too hard because remember I got biases everywhere. And if I can't see the background fabric, it means I've overstitched. I will take a seam ripper and pick it out. Because you backstitched a couple stitches, you're gonna be fine. I do not press yet. Then the next thing I'm gonna do, the last thing I'm going to do, is I'm gonna sandwich these together. Let me do this on here. And I'm handling it so carefully, you guys, so carefully, because I do not want to stretch any biases. Then on this last one, I can sew in either direction. I can go from the point here all the way in here and backstitch. Now I can't see the dot. When I get into here, I can't see the dot, but I know that there's a dot in there. So I know I'm gonna come up and back stitch and call it a day. All right, still haven't pressed. So now I am going to press. Let's look at this piece. You can't tell, but I can, cause my nose is on it. This is a bias here. And this is a bias here. Well, that's really lucky that these are two on the straight of grain. Wow, that's really lucky. Usually one side is a, is a straight and the other side's a bias. I'm going to turn it over and I'm gonna press from the back side because I want this seam opened. Somebody asked, how do you not burn your fingers? I don't know, very carefully. I'm gonna open it and I'm gonna go up Note that I am not going to go like this or like this. I'm just going to get my business done because, again, who knows where the biases are. So that's going to be pressed open. I used a light color thread because these are both fairly light pieces. And when it presses open, you can't see the little seams in there. Now for the triangle. Oh boy, now I do have biases here and here. So I've gotta be really careful. So what I'm gonna do for pressing, is all I wanna do is get this particular triangle going in that direction. I don't even care what's going on in here right now. I am pressing so that I can 
sew it with the seams in the right direction. I'm going to go up, off. That This iron never touched this edge. All right, like that. So here we go here. Don't touch that edge, Alex. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't worry about all this bulk in here right now. You're just getting it ready to sew. Okie doke. Let me see. Now what? All right. So now you've got to do the background squares. Let me get this so we can see. All right. Here is a unit. Um, let me do this one here. Here is the unit that we just sewn. Now you're going to take your square and you're going to line it up exactly along this outside edge. And remember, we put a dot on it right down there. So I'm going to sew up to it, back stitch. So I'm putting its little wings on right now. I'm not worried about pressing. I think you only press like two or three times on this block. Don't over press. And then I put, oh shoot, you guys. I think that's better. So I've got a little wing on this one and I got a little wing on this one, all right? And then I have, then I gotta sew these guys together. Note, I've already done it here. Now we have to pin. Well, first of all, no, we don't. First of all, we're gonna line this one up to here. Again, lining up this outside seam like this. Beautiful out here. And then I'm gonna turn it over. And here is the little dot that I'm gonna backstitch and come down. Then, okay, we're gonna pretend like this is sewn. Then we have to line up, okay, pretend, pretend, pretend. Then we have to line up this point here. If this point, and this one's already been sewn, doesn't come together perfectly, it will never be a perfect center. So how I'm gonna do it is I get my pins, my beautiful glass head pins that are super fine. I align, it's so natural I just started to do it. I want to align this seam exactly with this seam. So I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna, this is gonna be my peaky, my peaky method. I can see right here it's going straight across that, that line. And then I'm going to drop in a pin. We've done this before, right? A sixteenth of an inch before, a sixteenth of an inch after. I'm going to open it up. Oh, it's off. That is off, people. So now's your chance to do it again. This is so weird. Okay, I'm rolling it in place. That is one thing, when you press your seams open, this the it's harder to line things up because when you press from one side to another, things butt against each other. Say a little prayer. Yeah, that's pretty darn good. All right, and then I sew it up. So we've got now this side sewn together, pretend, pretend, and we've got this side. So basically we have halves, half, half, all right? The next thing you do, what did I, what's this demo? I'm gonna sew first the outside seam. Sorry, the outside seam by lining this up exactly on the outside edge. So down to the dot and back stitch. Wherever there's a dot, there's a back stitch. And then I'm gonna do the same on this side. I'm going to do this, go down, back stitch. No pressing yet. And now what you're gonna end up with is this. You're gonna end up with a uh, a hole in the center, all right? But everything is sewn up, but the hole in the center. 
Now I'm gonna do my three pin method and you, I believe I've already done a thing on pinning here. So all you have to do is go to the, I'm gonna show you, but you go to the front page of thequiltshow.com, scroll down and we have a complete playlist of everything. So what I want, whoo those look good. I mean, it's fun to look. Okay, this is beautiful. And this is beautiful. The points come exactly together. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fold it like this. Why is that health insurance thing coming up? Oh, brother. I wonder if you saw that, it was just on my computer. So I'm gonna take my pins. In the back side here, I'm gonna go right into that V, straight in. But I'm gonna look on this side to make sure it's coming exactly out on the point because sometimes it lies. Sometimes even though you're in the exact same place here, you go here, yeah, it's lying to me right now. So you wanna make sure the pin is in. Yeah, that's pretty good. Then I'm going to pin exactly into the other one. And this is where I don't wanna use my flower pins. And then I'm gonna hold it together, pressing in, not real hard because I'll tell you right now, this is a bias. The other side's a bias. You're handling this with kid gloves. How many of you owned kid gloves? We did. Easter. And then I'm going to put this in a sixteenth of an inch before. That's a bent pin. You know, when you get bent pins, just throw them out. A sixteenth of an inch after. I'm going underneath the fabric where I'll be stitching. Of course, I'll remove the pin, but I'm gonna open it up, make sure the line is going straight across, which it is. And then when I sew, I know that in here, this corner thing, I know there's a dot. So I'm gonna back stitch. I'm not gonna go all the way from the edge. I'm gonna back stitch. I'm gonna come, 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 come. And right before my needle goes into that, I'm gonna pull it out. The needle's gonna go right into that hole. And then I'm gonna continue on to the other side. Again, stopping short of right there because of that's where your back stitch is gonna be. So this is a really forgiving, forgiving block. Now let's talk about pressing. No, now let's look at the back of the first block. Where the heck did that go? Okay, now you can go in and you can press. Where's my phone? John's asking where my phone is. I don't know. I don't know where anything is. Oh, it's right here. Oh, I wanted to show everybody this. Okay, sorry. I got interrupted by somebody important. You love my Sparrow? While we're doing this, Sparrow is just grooving next to the window in the sun. It's a good day to be a cat in Livermore. Okay, so let's talk about pressing now. I press all of these seams open. That way I don't have such a, I don't have a big fat belly button here. And then it naturally kind of, I just let it go where it naturally wants to go. Sometimes it wants to go this way, which seems very counter, which seems very counterintuitive because because you kind of want to see th this point here when you go to sew it to something else, another block. But that's okay, because we can do the pinning technique. What you don't want is this. This is ridiculous, okay? This is what it's going to probably look like before you go and press it. But the pressing on this takes time, all right? And if you do get a little bit of a, little bit of a lump like that, Go get your spray start, your best press or whatever, and go ahead and spray it, and it will forgive some. I know it will. Now, here's the other one. Now I'm going to be the big, the big fat tease. I think this is cool. Oh, let's talk about split lemoines. Well, that's a whole other thing in itself. When you understand the basics of this, this just becomes an extension of only guess what, you have biases all over kingdom come. Now on show 606 at thequiltshow.com, I do a segment on how to do this. We go through the preliminaries of this, but then we get down to the big dog right here. This, even if you press open, 
this is one heck of a belly button right here going on, okay? So 606, you can be a member for six months for 1995, and we have so much there for you. When you see, when you see our compilations, you'll get it on how much is there. Now, I've got sad news. On Friday, I spoke about the sew along that we are going to do. I was going to take, um, get over here, mister. This quilt that I originally created out of Edita's fabric, I don't, I can't remember which line. And I said, okay, you guys, let's look at this quilt. You've got, you've got a whole lot of different piecing cartwheels going on. Hey, there's even a Y seam in it. If you look at the basket on the middle left hand side, that's basically how you um, do a Lemoyne star, half of a Lemoyne star. But we're going to go through this whole thing. And I mentioned that when I was out at the store, I just, I just, my heart went crazy when I saw this and I thought, we're going to make that pattern out of these fabrics. I stole some fabric. I guess I didn't steal it because I guess TQ has paid for it. But I stole, I stole some fabric from the stash, or from the trash, and I was just going to sew with those. And then I don't know. I, I think I have to have it. I think I do. And I probably will make this quilt again. I'm not making any big promises just because I've had. This has been really strange for me too, you guys. It's been really, really strange. And. If I make the quilt, I might do something real. If I'm if I make the quilt, I'm gonna do something cool with it. Let's just say that. All right. The other thing I want to say is that we do have patterns. The for those of you that ordered the bundles, and I'm so sorry that I'm I'm just oh well, I'm thrilled that we sold them. I mean, we have like 70 of them. They're gone. Man, they were gone by that evening. Um, but you can still play along. And you can get this as a downloadable PDF on thequiltshow.com. You will want this if you're going to make this darling little wall hanging. We, If you're ordering fabric, we're going to send you printed ones. So if you're ordering fabric, the bundle, it comes with it. So don't go get it, all right? And I believe that today those will ship out in it, or tomorrow and it will be priority mail. So you will have it by Friday. This is how I see the rest of this week going. I think Wednesday, I am going to show, I wonder if I even have that image in here. I'm going to show how I did the zigzag border. I happen to find, here, let me grab this. I happen to find step outs from, step outs from this. So there's no way I redo that whole thing, but I would be happy to show you in little sections how to do that zigzag border. This is also a pattern. It's on my personal site, alexandersonquilts.com, and it's called Circle Play, and it too is a PDF downloadable pattern. On Friday, we're going to talk about fabric, all right? And this lesson's going to take a little bit longer, but for those of you that are like going, doggone it, I missed out on the bundle, I'm pretty confident that you have some fabric in your life, and I can show you different fabric combinations on how to approach making this fabulous little Sequoia sampler. I will also probably be adding white into mine with my little bundle because the value change is not real huge in this bundle. It'll just have a completely different look. So Wednesday, we'll do zigzag border. Friday, we'll do a whole thing on fabric. Again, it will probably take a little bit longer. I'm not going to do my whole PowerPoint presentation, but I do have step outs like how I was showing you this from classes that I used to do hands-on that we can talk about it. And I am sure, I am 100% confident that you will be able to pull stuff from your stash. So zigzag board, yeah, it's not that bad. Uh, so also, if your friends, my, it's Johnny was, Johnny was, right now they're having a 75% sale off. Somebody asked, what's this blouse? And I love, 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 love their stuff. It's super uber expensive in my book, but when they go on sales, when I swoop in and get what I want. So this is what we're gonna do. If you have any questions, please send it to the customer service, um, Brandy, she's adorable, at um, the 
quiltshow.com go to and she will forward it to me if i know the answers i will tell you the answers if i don't i'll just pretend like i didn't get it no i'm kidding so i want you guys to have a great day i have a secret block i have to make for somebody and then i have to work on another block i'm glad i have these assignments because it's the only thing that's getting me through this so please do more hand quilting okay jake listen on the quiltshow.com there is a series of classrooms series on hand quilting it goes through the batting it goes through the stitch it goes through i did it so long ago i don't remember so please go look there to do that would be extremely difficult in this format because of my real snazzy camera setup here <laughs> So Johnny was W the designer is Johnny was W A S right now. They're having a 75% off on their garments and that brings them down to affordable. So if somebody missed this lesson, go to the front page of the quiltshow.com scroll down and we are archiving it for everybody and spread the word because I think we're doing a lot of really great things for quilters worldwide here, and it wouldn't be here without you. So on the back, people, you are awesome. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with me. Bye-bye.